All right, so this is Sweet Green. We started six years ago, and we really didn't know what we were doing. We wanted to kind of solve a problem, and we were passionate about uh, healthy food, uh, but we weren't restaurant people. And so we really relied on kind of our intuition and approaching the business more as a startup than a restaurant company. And so we incorporated a lot of lifestyle elements from the beginning, focused a lot on digital and social media. We, we used to market a lot just to ourselves. And I think a lot of people do that, right? You think something's cool, you think everybody thinks something's cool. And I think there's a certain validity to that, but we also have to you know, know what's cool for us and know what's cool for all of our customers. What we do really well is listen to our customers. I think, you know, a lot of brands will, you think about push and pull marketing, right? A lot of brands try to push a message. Um, we actually take a lot of time to really listen to what our customers are saying about our product, their in-store experience, um, and what they think about Sweetgreen in general as a brand. And so through those organic conversations, you know, we're able to better tailor our own content. We feel like a big company at 21 restaurants right now, but at the end of the day, we really do operate like a startup, and our digital team is very small. So we try to focus on efforts on the, our efforts on the platforms that we think are the most powerful. So right now, um, we are on Instagram, which is sort of our like the driving force behind our social strategy. We kind of approach social, kind of we approach sourcing in our stores, so it's very regional focused. Uh, we, have, we still have one handle, but depending on the market or depending on kind of the season, we kind of change the tone. Um, so it's, it's kind of based on a seasonal calendar, just like the restaurants. There's always been conversations about, well, do we decentralize our social media presence and you know, have a Twitter handle for our, you know, our Boston followers and something separate for our New York followers? And it's, the integrity of the brand is, is much um, stronger when it's you know, in, within a centralized platform. So when you walk into a store, you're going to hear cool music. You're going to see local lists where all of our food comes from. You're going to see photos of bands we've had, our Sweet Life Festival. And we really try and bring that same experience to you online. So we'll tweet about music. We'll do concert giveaways. We'll host, you know, we host a big Sweet Life Festival. When we, uh, we opened our second store in D.C., uh, we, we had no business. We, we had to figure out how to market that store. So we, uh, all we knew how to do was to DJ and play music. So we went and bought a big speaker, we put it outside and just faced it towards the park, passed out menus, passed out samples, and it worked. There was this interesting emotional connection between food and music. It worked because it's something that we really love to do, and it was like music and food, the things we love most, like can we bring them together? So the next year we did a block party, about 100 people, free food, local bands. We did a block party again, and then after that we were able to um, work with great partners in DC and throw this, this uh, annual music festival called Sweet Life Festival. For us, we kind of view, we view social media as more of a long-term loyalty play. So, you know, if we're tweeting a message out or Instagramming a particular photo, we didn't expect that somebody's gonna instantly walk into the store and that's gonna translate into dollars and cents for the company. We have something in the company where we, one of our core values is to add the sweet touch. And Twitter's a really great way to establish that one connection with person, you know, to really make sure that that's gonna be a loyal customer. So. Our October salad is really popular. It had um, apples, pears, and candy pecans. And we recently just had this girl tweet, you know, give me candy pecans or give me death. So what I actually did is I sent her a Twitter direct message, got her address, and I uh, delivered a case of candy pecans to her doorstep. So it's really good for those little moments as well. But you can really monitor people's responses. And I think social media, what's really unique about it is this unsolicited content. No one's paying them to say that. So it's the most genuine and authentic content you're going to receive.